Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we will be talking about variable arguments. Now, even before we start understanding how variable arguments work, what is their syntax, what is uh, you know the way of calling them, let's understand why something like variable arguments is needed. So, let's say I have a function here, public int and sum, and I'm passing two integers here, int num1 and int num2. And what I am trying to do here is, I am trying to return the sum of num1 plus num2. Okay. And when I call this particular method here in my code, I will be saying sum of let us say 10, 12. And what I can do is, I can print this particular sum. I can say this out and Inside this, I can print the sum. Okay. So, when I try to run this particular code, this code is working fine. As you can see, I have got the sum as 20. Now, let us say if I want to, rather than adding 2 numbers, now I want to add 3 numbers. Let us say 34. Okay. You can see the existing method will not work. It is asking me to create another method, okay, for sum which takes three arguments as you can see here. So, similarly, if I want, let us say, three rather than three, let us say I want four uh, arguments or let us say I want five arguments. So, my existing method is not going to work. I will have to overload that many methods every time that I want to increase my number of arguments. Maybe in some cases, I might also want to decrease it like here to Say, let us say I make one more method which has 3 now. So, I might, uh, you know, increase here itself. Let us say I am saying, I am saying num 3 here. So, this might work for the time being. But, when I want to again reduce this number of arguments, this might not work for me. So, if I am doing something like this now, this method will again not work. I will have to have that many number of overloaded methods. Now, the problem here could be that I am not aware how many number of arguments I am going to get every time. This might be 2, 3, 4 five any number of arguments that I want. So, then in that case, my overloaded functions will not help me with this particular problem. Okay. So, the solution to this was variable arguments. What variable argument does is, variable argument allows you to accept input as a dynamic array. So, here in this case, for declaring a variable argument, I need to say int that is the data type, then three dots and the variable name. Okay. This will make it behave as a integer array. And you can see now the error has gone from here. It is accepting any number of arguments. It is taking 13 also. It is taking let us say 26 also. So, any number of arguments it is taking and it is not throwing an error. In fact, it will also allow you to you know pass no arguments. That is, I can even have a no argumented method. Getting it. Now, the question is how do I work with this then? Okay, how do I get the sum? So, as I said, this is nothing but an array. Okay, it is being backed by an array. So, if I have to work with it, I can simply use a for loop, any sort of for loop, a normal for loop or an enhanced for loop and get my sum. So, let us say if I am using an enhanced for loop or a simple for loop for that matter, I can say for int i equals to 0, I can say i less than num dot length. See, because it is behaving as an array, it is allowing us to use the lump, length uh, you know, method of, or the length property of it. And I can say i plus plus. Okay. And then I can say what? I can say sum, which I can initialize here to 0, is equals to 0. And I can say sum plus equals to i. Num of i. Okay. So, this works. Now, so uh, once this is done, I can say return sum. Okay. Now, when I save this code and try to run, you can see it is working fine. It gives me 22. Now, in case if I pass 15 here, okay, now this is 3 arguments. You can see I do not need to have any additional method here. The same method is working for any number of arguments. So, here you can see the sum is 37. Okay. Now, uh, 
one more thing that uh, you know we need to remember for uh, you know this variable arguments is that yes definitely something that can be done can also uh, you know through variable arguments can also be done through overloaded methods but one primary difference you know now this is very important for everyone to note that one primary difference between variable arguments and overloaded methods is that in a method which has a variable argument the values which are there in this need to be of the same type because as i said earlier this is going to be an array and inside an array you cannot have values of different data types so that is one you can say in a way drawback that when i'm using variable arguments all the values that i'm passing to this variable arguments need to be of the same data type that is one point number 2 is that this variable argument so let's say if i start writing something like this here let's say i say string and uh, maybe uh, you know name something like this will throw a compile time error again understand because this is a dynamic array this is not a static array we have not fixed the size the size is going to keep changing every time this cannot be the first argument this has to be compulsory again this is a rule that it has to be compulsorily the last argument so if it is the last argument then it works so i can pass here the first argument let's say i'm passing john matthew here and maybe these are john matthew's marks okay so we are summing up his marks and showing it here so this can work again one more rule that is there is that it cannot have multiple such you know variables here let's say i'm having percentages so i cannot have something like this again because this is not the last argument now num is throwing error because again the rule is same num is still not the last argument uh, you know or the last parameter of the method so again the same error so one rule rule number 1 is that it can only accept values of the same data type that is one number rule number 2 is that it has to be compulsorily the last parameter of the method rule number 3 you cannot have multiple variable arguments in your method parameter list so these are some three important rules that you need to remember again as i said earlier something that can be done through a variable arguments can also be done through method overloading but the problem is if you don't know how many arguments you are going to get every time working through an overloaded method will become pro a problem because you will not be aware of how many overloaded methods do you need to make so that will be a problem also uh, another issue that you have is that you know with overloaded methods uh, you know uh, what do you call it you will also see that in every method that you are writing you are ultimately writing a similar code so then it is again a redundant code when it is with overloaded methods that if you write an overloaded method with two arguments three arguments four arguments five arguments ultimately internally you are going to do a similar job so then again it's a waste of effort that you are doing with when you are trying to implement it with the overloaded so that is again one more problem now disadvantage as i said with variable arguments is only that it has to be the you know same data type that's one of the disadvantages second it has to be the only argument or the only parameter in the method you cannot have multiple you know so that's again in a, in a way you can say it's a drawback okay so just to summarize i'll just show you now the list of uh, you know uh, what do you call it the list of advantages and disadvantages and some important points that you need to remember about variable arguments when you are using them so i'll just show you a list of those well so here i have summarized all the points that i had mentioned in the video earlier so since variable arguments is a dynamic array the values that you insert inside a dynamic inside a variable argument has to be of the same data type that is one variable argument parameters has to be the last parameter in the method as i have shown you this also and we cannot have multiple variable argument parameters in the method so these are some of the points that you need to remember whenever you are using variable arguments in your code again it is a really a, you know big advantage uh, you know of variable arguments to use in cases when you can really not work with overloaded methods or when you are not sure of how many number of arguments you are going to have so yes it's a very important topic that as a java developer you should know so that is it for today uh in case if you have any questions you can email me also now your questions at kosha.d@gmail.com also you can always you know put your questions your feedbacks your suggestions in the comment section 
and uh, you can you know if you like my content please click on the like button subscribe to my channel and share my videos and uh, you know uh, channel with uh, your friends family and relatives thank you for watching my videos bye bye